All right, welcome back to uh, now we're going to be uh, adding entities into our ECS system. Uh, what I mean by that is we need to start actually creating the ability to to add the data, the components for each entity in because, you know, just having uh, resources in the world is great and all, but it's not really all that helpful when we need to store, you know, data for players, enemies, or anything else that is associated with a single, well, entity. So the way we're planning on, on uh, storing these inside is using a hash map. So a hash map is very similar to like an object uh, or a dictionary, depending upon which language you're coming from. Um, and so if we imagine that it's, an, it's like, you know, a dictionary here, we've got our curly bracket. Uh, and then we're going to have keys inside of here. And so we might have like a key of like locations. Uh, we might have another key of like sizes. Um, maybe even uh, colors. If they're all different colors, like the mesh. Lots of different things that make up this entity. So each of these would be called components. Now, uh, for the component, let's say we have, we're going to have like entity one. That might be our player. Uh, that's going to have a location. So it might have something like 55 and 62. Um, it might have a size of like 10, whatever that means. It might be blue as the color. And the mesh will just be, it's, um, I don't know, it'll look like that. So this entity is a column across all of this data. So what I want to do is be able to register what uh, components we're going to have and then basically set up empty um, empty columns, like empty rows for, for these, empty cells, essentially. So um, if we... If we come back here to our code, where we're going to uh, start the registration process, let's go take a look at what that's going to be like from us writing it. So in test, we're going to create a new file here. It's going to be entities RS. Um, and now we get to start actually just writing our tests. So we're going to start with test here. Uh, we're going to do a function. We're gonna we're gonna have this just be um, creating the entities uh, and registering them, right? So this is gonna be I want to create an entity. So create entity. Uh, so first we're gonna register. So let's say um, this also means that we're gonna have to have a component to register. We're going to follow the exact same pattern as before, where we're going to use the type ID of the component uh, to store in that, hey, it's a location. So if I have a struct, like location, um, this might be a, a tuple uh, of maybe two things, like let's say a uh, F32, F32. We do have to make these public in order to assign them to have like, you know, the types uh, and like put the data inside of them. But okay, let's let's create our location first. So that our location is equal to location of, let's say like um, uh, 42.0 and maybe 24.0. And then uh, we're going to want to register this. So we have to create a world. So that world equals world new. Once we have that, we just want to basically register an entity. So world.register. Now, it's not register component, right? We need to register the component, and then we can create the entity. So register component. Um, and we're probably going to use this turbofast syntax again. And we can 
throw in this location. So I don't actually need to have the data yet, but this is what I'm thinking of how we're going to actually use this. So we're going to register component. Maybe if we have like multiple components. So let's say we have like our size um, and this can be a F32 as well. Uh, maybe we'll do another register component. Uh, and you'll be the size. Okay. Now, once we have those two set up, we want to create an entity with a location and a size. Uh, we're going to do a world dot. I'm thinking create entity. Uh, I'm, I'm not thinking of like taking anything in here because we don't know, like, what if we have one entity that has a location but no size? and another entity that has both location and size. So in that case, uh, I'm thinking of using um, maybe like a slightly different pattern here. So what I can do is we're just gonna say world.create entity dot um, with component. Uh, and then we can just probably hand it what this data is. So maybe like this location. So thinking about it, the way we should really add this, just put this information right in here. So with component location here, uh, with component size of maybe like 10.0. And, and that would be it. Like we would then, it's it's done essentially. We've, we've now created this this entity. So the first part to do this is going to be this register component. That's what we need because we have the ability to create the world here. What we don't have this ability to, to register this component. So that's what we're going to do in this, you know, the rest of this video. Uh, so you're all very unhappy, totally understandable. Uh, we're going to come in. Well, we don't even have an entities in here, so we're going to create that. T's, S, and we're going to make this a module. Um, and let's go back into entities and sort of set this up. Uh, to begin with, we can even have like our test section here. So that way we can, um, we can actually just like test drive this um, oh, as we build it. Uh, let's see, our function, this is going to be register an entity. So the very first thing that we're going to want to have to do is let mute uh, entities equals entities. Um, probably want to do something like new here. Um, actually thinking about it, we just want to do a default because um, our our parent, like the the main world, is doing a default. Uh, do, so let's now create that. We'll do a pub struct entities. Um, we're going to derive. De let's derive debug and default. So that gives us this. Okay. So we, we should be happy with that now. We're also going to need the, like, you know, some kind of um, component to add in because that's what we're registering. So let's create a helper component here. So we're going to do a um, struct. What should this be? Um, we did location, we did size. Uh, maybe we'll do like health. Do health. Um, and health could be maybe like a U32. You can't go negative. You go negative, you're dead. So um, we'll do U32. Uh, this needs to be pub right here. So the next thing we want to do with this is we'll do entities dot um, register. What did I call it? It's a uh, Register component. 
register component and we'll give it this type of health. Okay, now what do we expect to get out of this? Like, because I can I can create this function um, to make this like to make this pass. But like, what's what's the end result? We want to create that column or the row, the cell, essentially, that's going to have probably an option with a none in it because, well, we don't start with anything in it. We don't want to have like make our players have defaults that don't make any sense. So uh, let's go ahead and create this function next. So to create this function, I'm going to do a impl entities a pub function. This is going to be register component. Um, we do notice that it takes in this uh, this generic here and do a t. Um, we know that it must be an any. And let's see if we can get away with this. But I'm thinking that we're we're probably not. We're going to get a compile error. But uh, I'll wait until we get that to show you what that looks like. Um, OK, so register component, we're going to have this t any uh, in the signature for this. We want this to be a mute self because we're going to do something with this. Uh, and we also want to access it through dot. Uh, and then the other thing is we want to take in well, we actually don't need to take in anything, do we? Because here's where this type is right here. Um, OK, I mean, it makes the error go away, but we're not really doing anything with it. Also, for this, we need to import standard any. OK, great. We now have register component here, but it's not really doing anything. Once we register component, how do we know that we have successfully registered the component? Well. Come back to our whiteboard here. We would assume that if we're adding like a location, we now have this this cell here, or rather, we have the option of putting a cell there. So let's think about this in like the the case of like a very empty plane. So let's uh, be all of you. Before you all happen, if we just add in one thing, we're going to now expect an empty vector, right? Like a vector with no size, nothing in it, because there's no entities yet. So that's what we want to see here, is a hash map inside of entities with the type ID as the key and an empty vector as, as the sort of as the result, because there's nothing in there yet. So we can actually assert for that. So let's assert um, equal. Uh, so this is going to be our entities dot um, probably components because it's going to be the storage for all the components. Uh, and then we're going to have, I guess we have to get this out first. So let's um, let this is going to be health components equal to entities dot register component. No, not not register component. This is going to be the components. Um, now, it doesn't exist yet, so that's that's a problem. And then we want to do a dot get. And then we're going to need a reference to the type ID. Uh, if you remember, we can get the type ID with a type ID of uh, health. That okay, we're getting a reference to that should that should get us this back. We should be able to unwrap this because it's going to give us an option out. And that's going to give us a health components, which should be an empty vector at this time. So health components, and then I want this to be the same as an empty vector there. So that's our test. Now you're going to fail because we can't even compile this because we don't have components. Let's add that in. Uh, I don't actually know if we need to make this public. We're just going to make it private right now. So components is going to be a vec of something.
What is going to be inside of this? Well, it's going to, we know it's going to be an option. So, we know it's going to be an option. But then after that, it's going to be all different data, right? Because it's going to be different data types. So we need to have a uh, dynamic dispatch. So it'll be a dyne something. Uh, in order to be a dyne something, we need to use something like a box, um, which is similar to what we did here in resources. Uh, we have a box. However, we're going to have a problem if we use boxes because uh, later on, um, especially for components as opposed to resources, when we query for them and start doing like uh, anything to this data, we're going to want to query for them multiple times. Uh, we're going to uh, need to like get things mutably and immutably. Uh, and there's um, it, it becomes very difficult. The, the borrow checker is going to sort of have a conniption with us quite often. So maybe what we can do is have some kind of data structure that allows us to have interior mutability for us. Uh, and Rust actually has that uh, available for us using something called an RC and a ref cell. So the RC is like the box. Uh, it's going to reference count for us, uh, hence the name RC. And then we're going to have a ref cell, which is going to be a, ref a reference to a cell, but that allows us to get interior mutability. We'll go into that in future videos as we do the queries, but we're going to set ourselves up for that now. So we're going to have an RC and then a ref cell. And then inside of this, it's going to be a dime any. So this is what is going to make up our components. This is a pretty nasty type here. Um, in fact, it's, it's nasty enough that we might want to like change this and like make it something that's going to be a little bit nicer to look at. Um, I'm going to not worry about that right this second, but it's, it's something I'm going to keep in mind. But okay. So if we have this here, um, we should, we shouldn't even have a none at this point because really we're going to, um, it's just going to be an empty vector. So really this should still be exactly the same. Now, what are you up, upset about? Um, oh, look at this. So it's yelling me. This is what I meant by like, it's not going to compile until we, we change something else is, uh, we can't index just any, we also have to have a plus static here. So we're going to say that our entities, the components have to be made up of, well, anything that also implements static. And when I do that, let's see. Cannot find static in the scope. Uh, maybe you'll tell me exactly where it needs to be. Uh, let's see, you need to be, oh, this like tick static. That's what it is. Plus tick static. And okay, so now it knows that that this is going to work. Uh, let's see what else is upset with you. Oh, I think I think what I need to do is get the type ID outside of here first. So we're going to do that our type ID is equal to this. Move you up to this line. And then we're going to reference to our type ID. Uh, let's see, type uh, option with the RC ref cell static cannot be indexed by type ID. Oh, um, that's because this is a, I completely messed uh, this up. This is not a vector. This is the, this is the type, right? We really want this to be the hash map. Hash map. That's what it's complaining to me about with a type ID as the key. And then the value is this, is this entire fun thing. So there we go. That's what it was yelling at me about. And I wasn't paying attention. So we're going to hand it the key here. So get the type ID. That gives us now this health components. Now, can I actually compare? 
Uh, binary operations cannot be applied to this type. Um, actual error occurred here. Okay, so basically I can't actually compare these two things together, even though it's an empty vector. Um, so what we can maybe do is just like know that we got something um, here. So we've unwrapped it. Uh, we should have like a length of zero. And it should be zero. Now, if I run this, this should run. Uh, what are you upset about? And is it the other code? Uh, oh, register entity packed on unwrap um, on source entities, line 28. So here we unwrap from the get because we have components we get from the hash map. Uh, we unwrap. We did the register component. Oh, you know why? Because we haven't done anything inside of this register component. Uh, so we need to do a self dot uh, components dot insert our key is going to be this um we do the type id of this t and then the value is going to have to be a not like just a none right now and that's where uh actually an empty vector Uh, we'll do an empty vector here, and then that way we should now be a lot better. I don't see any errors inside of here. Let's try running this test again. And now it's passing. Perfect. So um, what's happening here is we're able to register the component that creates a new row in our sort of in-memory database with nothing inside of it, because we haven't like actually created any entities to do anything for us. And I can create multiple of these register components here. Uh, if we want to debug this out, sort of like see what it looks like, I can do a debug of entities. And here's what that looks like. We have our components with a type ID. Here's this type and then an empty vector as its value. And, um, and that's it. We're able to now register an entity uh, for our, our components. Now, we're not fully done yet. Um, in the next video, we're going to start with the uh, create entity and uh, then move on to with components. So I'll see you in that video.